Schön. Hi, Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here. I just want to say thank you, thank you so much for everybody that's been responding to these music theory, guitar theory uh, videos. It's been awesome. I'm so excited that you guys are learning this stuff and you're actually realizing how important it is to learn fundamental theory. It's not a scary thing and it's not like I got to go to six years of college to learn this stuff. It's not all that and I'm glad that you're now realizing that. So in the first video, what we did was we set up the scenario of the chromatic scale, understanding how all of these notes in music actually work together. We applied it to the guitar. The second thing that we did was we started learning how the major scale works and how all the keys of the major scale are actually the same structure over and over and over, okay? It's just as you move further and further away from that pure key of C, you get more accidentals, more sharps or more flats in your key. And then we learn how to apply that to our guitar. So now the next thing we need to do is start learning some basic chord theory, okay? Now you probably know how to play a G chord and a D chord and a C chord and things like that, but you might not know what's actually happening in there. And of course the question always is, well, why do I need to know? Well, you don't need to know anything, I suppose, but the trick would be is, is knowing those things actually tell you what notes are being emphasized within each chord, which can really come in handy if you're a singer, if you're trying to write a solo or you're trying to write a melody or you're trying to improvise over the top, all kinds of different things can happen there. Instead of just knowing shapes, if I know that this G chord is actually generating these notes, it can give my whole musical perspective direction as opposed to just going, well, that's a G chord and this is the chord or the scale G and not really having any relationship between the chords and the scales. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. So if you look at my whiteboard here, I've got chord theory basics. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by learning what a chord really is. The, the, the root of a chord, the, 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 the strength of what a chord is. The first thing we need to learn is this. Triad, the term triad, which obviously means three. Okay, Chords always start off as triads. In music theory, a chord needs to be a triad, and then we can expand into other things. We can make that chord bigger, we can alter that chord, and again, we're going to do all those kind of things in the course. Um, but let's talk about that, that basic fundamental element, which is the root, the third, and the fifth. Okay, Those three notes make up every chord that you play. When you play a G or a D or an A minor, an E minor, or a a G7 or whatever it might be. Everything from a diminished to an augmented to a demented to a, a major or minor chord, it doesn't matter what it is. They all start off with this essential core triad. Now, we've got our key of C here, okay? These are our roots, okay? These are our roots, right there. So when you're in the key of C, we know we get the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And we know that because the key of C has no sharps and no flats. This seven note scale is going to generate seven individual independent chords. Every key will. The beauty of this is by the time we get done, you're going to know all the chords for all the keys. It's pretty cool. So let's take a look at this to begin with. Okay, we have to have a root, a third, and a fifth. And we're talking about the distance from the, the root itself. So we have a root, which is C. If we go up a third, so we're at one, two, three, we add on the note E. If we go up a fifth, we go one, two, three, four, five. C is, is itself, it's one. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we look at the next chord, we have D. Well, D, one, two, three, D, F, and A. One, two, three, four, five. The shortcut I have is that you just count up every other note for the first three notes. So E, F, G, A, B. And you have to say it like that. E, F, G, A, B. All spastically like that. E, G, B. That's how I used to do it in, in classes. I would just sit there and go A, B, C, D, E, G, A, B, C, D. And it would give me the notes that I'm looking for. So F, A, C, F, G, A, B, C, root, third, fifth. G, B, D, G, B, D. Remember, C is C is C. So you don't have two C's. It's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. On and on and on. 
So your chord is G, B, D, A, C, E, and B, D, F. Those are the notes. So when you play chords, these are the notes that you're playing. Now, we're not done. We have to keep going here, all right? So the next thing we need to do is we need to talk about the intervals or distances themselves for each one of these chords. You got to follow along. And again, if you have a piece of paper and a pencil, or if you don't, you know, pause the video, go grab those and come on back because this is going to be huge, okay? So C to E, what we want to learn, okay, are the distances between each one of these. The distance from C to E is a third. The distance from C to G is a fifth. Root third, fifth. But the truth is, what chords really are, are stacked thirds. C to E is a third. E to G is a third. Then we'd add another third, and we'd add another third, and we'd add another third. That's how chords are created, extending chords. We just keep stacking on another third over and over and over. D to F is a third. F to A is a third, and so on. So let's look at the distances between these thirds. C to E, let's think in terms of whole steps for now, okay? And again, we'll get far more in depth in the, the course, but uh, let me help you with this. So C to E, how many whole steps or half steps is it from C to E? And your answer should be two. C to D is a whole step, and D to E is a whole step. So this is two whole steps, okay? And again, this gets far deeper, but we're, I'm going to try and just show you the, the, the basic overview of how this works, and then you can start using it in your own play. And then E to G, let's look at that distance. What's the distance in terms of whole steps or half steps from E to G? And your answer should be one and a half. It's one and a half steps, okay? If we look at the next chord, D to F, what's the distance there? D to E, E to F. What do you think? The answer is one and a half. And the next one here is two. So you'll see these two chords, the problem is they're different from each other. This first chord, two over one and a half, is major. That's the definition of a major chord, is two whole steps over one and a half steps. Okay? The next one we see is one and a half over two. And that's the definition of a minor chord. Now, when I say two, whoops, sorry about that. I got to turn my marker there. When I say two, I'm talking about what we refer to as a major third. It is a third. We just talked about how these are stacked thirds. The bigger one is called major third. One and a half, then it's of course called minor third. So what you're dealing with here is a major chord is a major third over a minor third. A minor chord is a minor third over a major chord, or a major third, excuse me. So what's awesome about this is, let me just keep going, and then again, when you've got some time, and you wanna work on this a little bit, grab your piece of paper, grab a, a pencil or a pen, and take a look at this. And if you got one now, you can keep going with me. E to G is one and a half. G to B is two. That's a minor chord. F to A is two. A to C is one and a half. That's a major chord, two over one and a half. Here we've got two over one and a half. That's a major chord as well. We take a look at this one. That's one and a half. A to C is one and a half. C to E is two. That's a minor chord. Now, check this one out. Okay, do this one for me. Take a look at this last one. What's the distance from B to D? One and a half. What's the distance from D to F? It's one and a half. It's kind of weird. So when you get one and a half over one and a half, you get what's called, whoops, sorry, diminished. It's hard to write it in an angle. You get diminished. This chord is diminished. Now, this is the point. This is the big picture. Not that this isn't important, it's incredibly important, and we're going to study that in detail in this course. But let me show you this. This is the best part. We know that the first chord is major, because it's two over one and a half, or a major third over a minor third. The second chord is minor, so I write it with a small Roman numeral. The third chord is minor. The fourth chord is major. It's two over one and a half. 
the fifth chord is major. It's two over one and a half. The sixth chord is minor. It's one and a half over two. And the seventh chord is its own little beastie. It's a seven chord that's diminished. Now, the truth is, is in popular music, whether it's country, rock, blues, pop, metal to a certain degree, um, you know, all those kind of things, the seven chord really isn't used that often. You use it a lot in jazz, um, but in popular music, we just don't really use it that often. And when it does occur, a lot of times it, it actually is used incorrectly in terms of its theory. Now, again, in the course, I'm going to talk about all those kind of things in the theory course. You know, I talk about all the things that, that don't fit theoretically as well, which is what I call real world playing um, or non-logical playing. And uh, we'll talk about all those kind of things too. But what I want you to get out of this is that your one, your four, and your five is major. Your two and your three and six are minor. And then, of course, your seven is diminished. Because your half step and whole step configuration from the last video is the same for every key, the outcome is the same for every key. If you're in the key of G, your one, four, five is still going to be major. Your two, three, six is still going to be minor. And your seven is still going to be diminished. Okay? That's what's awesome about it. Because of this theory, you will learn all the chords for all your keys. What you need, of course, is, again, it's all about order. And that's why I'm doing these videos for you to, to watch them. If you understand the chromatic scale, you can create the major scale or the diatonic scale, which is what we did in the first and second videos. From there, we can create these chords. Okay, and we can create this chord structure of understanding that the one, four, five is major, and now we know why, and the two and three and six are minor, and, and of course, again, no, now we know why. So if we knew that the key of G gets one sharp and F sharp, we just go G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished. If we knew that the key of D gets an F sharp and a C sharp, and it does because of the, the video we talked about last time, well, then we got D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor, C sharp diminished. Boom! It's that easy. Okay? So it's not that it takes so much time. It's that you have to just take things slow and think about it. Again, if we start with the whiteboard, if we start with understanding what it is that we're trying to do, we get our brain wrapped around it, then we can go to our guitar and we can start applying these things, okay? So the last thing I want to do for you right now, if I can find my guitar pick, there we go, is I want to apply this idea to your guitar so you can actually start using this and move it to any key you want. So let's head up to the C here. So we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and remember we talked about that last time, okay? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Well, from each one of those notes, we're going to put a chord onto that. Now, we need to know our bar chords, okay? So that's going to be important. I'm just going to be playing major and minor bar chords to show you this, but you could play this anywhere on your fretboard. So, on this C chord, or on the note C, I'm going to play a C major chord. And the major bar chord, of course, is done by pressing on all strings with my first finger across the eighth fret. And then I add my middle finger on the third string, ninth fret and I add my ring finger on the 5th string 10th fret, and I add my pinky on the 4th string 10th fret. That's a major bar chord. I'm on C. Now the next one I've got is a D minor, so I'm going to move up a whole step to D, and I'm going to make this minor by taking the middle finger off. Now this is pretty cool. Think about this. The major was 2 over 1.5. The minor was 1.5 over, over 2. The note that changes is the 3rd. If I had a C chord right here, which I do, C, E, and G. Now, pay careful attention to this. This is pretty cool. This is a theory tip, which I have all kinds of those in the, the course as well. This is two over one and a half. So right now I'm playing this C chord, C major, right here. That's what I'm playing, C, E, and G. If I wanted this chord to be minor, all I would have to do is take this E and move it back to E flat, which would make this one and a half and this two. And the way we do that on our guitar is we just take that finger off. This note right here is the E. That makes it E flat. So if you ever have a major chord and you want to make it minor, all you do is flat this middle note. You lower it one. E becomes E flat. Here's another major chord. A would become A flat. 
here's another major chord, B would become B flat. And of course on the guitar, how we do that, this middle note, this middle finger I should say, excuse me, is the note that's the third. This is that note that we're talking about. So I take that off and it becomes minor. Pretty cool, huh? So again, there's lots of revelations in this course. There's lots of different cool things that we're gonna talk about um, in detail so you don't question your fretboard anymore. So let's keep going. We got C major, we got D minor, and we're gonna move up two whole steps, or excuse me, a whole step higher. We're gonna go E minor. So C major, D minor, E minor. On the fifth string, we're gonna do an F major fifth string bar chord. So I'm barring over the bottom five. I'm using my third finger to press on the second, third, and fourth strings. At the 10th fret, that's major. Then I'm gonna move up to my five chord, which is also major. And then my sixth chord, which is minor. So we have C, D, E, F, G, A. Major, minor, minor, major, major, and then when I move up to A minor, or uh, yeah, A minor here, because I'm in this key, okay? I'm barring over the, again, the bottom five strings, and I'm gonna put my ring finger on the 14th fret of the fourth string, my pinky on the 14th fret of the third string, and my middle finger on the, uh, the uh, second string, 13th fret, sorry about that, and there's my minor, okay? So the awesome part about this is if you know your bar chords, I've got myself major, 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 there's my one, four, five, right there. My two, three, and six are sitting right there. Minor, minor, minor. So here's my one, four, five, they're all major. And then two, three, six are all minor. Okay, and then I've got my little diminished chord over here, which is done by playing 14th fret of the fifth string, 15th fret of the fourth string, 14th fret of the third string, 15th fret of the second string. And we can play a diminished chord right there. Okay? Now again, I'm not worried about the diminished. It's the other six I want you to really think about. So I've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Because now I can head down to the key of G, and I have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Think about how easy that would be with that knowledge to be able to transpose in any key. Or somebody says, oh, we're going to do this song, and it's in the key of D, and you're like, ah, oh, no big deal. You find D, you set yourself up, you put all six chords, and you're ready to go. Now, there are changes, right? There are fluctuations. There's alter, alterations that happen in music, and we're going to discuss all of those kind of things in, in this course. But this is a great place for you to start to begin building all of this. So uh, please remember, again, thank you for all the, the responses we've been getting um, on the Facebook community page. Um, you know, anytime that we can discuss these things and make them make sense to you, um, please do so. We're here to help you. That's the whole point. So if you go to Facebook, you find the Guitar Zoom community page, you sign up for it, you know, just join it. And we can talk about any of these things at any point in time. So I encourage you to do so. Um, you know, don't feel like, you know, I shouldn't ask that question because people should already know that. People shouldn't already know anything. That's how you learn. You got to ask those questions. So in the next video, we're going to learn how to take the major scale and we're going to convert that major scale into minor and see the foreshadowing of how modes work. So good luck with our chord theory and I'll see you soon.